Hello, you have a call at no expense to you from... They all started... An inmate at Iowa Medical and Classification Center in Coralville, Iowa. And ended... The same way. A 20-minute phone call each time. Is it all right if we record this call? But for the first time, yeah. we're hearing what's in the middle. What's in the mind of McKinley Roby? The inmate's still recovering from the attacks inside the Anamosa State Penitentiary. I'll never forget that day. Beaten with a hammer within an inch of his life. March 23rd, 2021. Roby was on his morning work routine, he says, chatting with Nurse Lorena Schulte when he says inmates Thomas Woodard and Michael Dutcher said they were there to fix a microwave inside a first floor break room. They come over to fix a microwave, but it sounds like they, they're tearing it up. And she's, she said, well, Rob, come on, let's go back there and see. They could be hurt or something. Once there, Roby recalls they found Woodard and Dutcher and an already beaten corrections officer, Robert McFarland. I forgot that the guy was behind me. He was looking out to see if there was anybody else coming. And at the same time, he said, let's do this. You know, Buffalo just jumped up on us. He was uh, attacking me from the back. We was all on the floor then, and they would just hit me with the hammer. I remember just getting hit in the face, seeing this big bright light, you know, and I was out. All for a botched escape plan. Roby says he woke up to the smell of the two trying to grind their way out of the metal bars that kept them in. I, really, I didn't have strength to do anything anyway. They took it out of me. Why did you step in? We was all pretty close, you know. And so it was just natural instincts, man. Roby says he worked with Schulte and McFarland for years, even though he was an inmate and they were staff. I call it a family. I said, yeah, I always had to make sure the family had their stuff so they could make the day go easy. Trying to protect that family came with a cost. Roby has external and internal injuries that may never heal. He says a broken jaw, facial bone, and elbow surgery are just some of the reasons he's in the state medical classification center. A state press release shows he received multiple skull fractures and was taken to the University of Iowa hospital. That's what they said I had. PTSD is like people that get out of the army and what else. He says he's seen therapists for his PTSD can't be in small spaces and takes mental health medication. He says he's received help for his mental health while in prison. I commend him for that. If McKinley Roby is the superhero of this story, he was once the villain. Roby is serving a 25-year sentence for criminal sexual assault and is a habitual offender. Court records show he picked up a 15-year-old in a vehicle and forced her to perform oral sex on him in Waterloo in 2001. I'm playing devil's advocate here, McKinley, but you you did go to Anamosa for a reason. Right. I'm not, I'm not knocking that. You know, I done something. You know, I accepted all my responsibilities of whatever I've done over the years. I didn't deny nothing. Roby is set to be released in 2027 in for a crime he accepts and a victim of another crime 20 years later. Is it hard to live in the same type of environment that you almost died in? Yes, it is. Every day. Treat me like you treat everybody, you know, the other families and stuff, you know, because I think I played a big part of that. You know, waking up between two of them, two people that I knew, one lying down at the bottom of my feet, you know, already deceased. And the other one laying beside me, you know, looking at me like he's looking at me, taking his last, last breath and stuff. My mind is, I'm in the middle of that. In the middle of a system for a crime he committed and another he experienced. By the grace of God, you know, how did I survive? I was wondering how did, you know, it had to be, it had to be the Lord upstairs, because I don't understand how I survived it. And Woodard and Dutcher were convicted of killing Nurse Lorena Schulte, Corrections Officer Robert McFarland as well. Both sentenced to life in prison. Neither have shown remorse for almost killing McKinley Roby. In fact, in court, Woodard says, quote, I wish I hit him one more time, end quote. Roby now wants out of prison, partially for what he did that day, but he also says because he's changed.